Five in a CLG's 2-0 start into the series. Thank you, Freak. And I like the point about the single threat comps. We're going to get to that, but I do want to work through the game chronologically. We saw pretty big CS discrepancies in the top lane in favor of Team Impulse and in the mid lane in favor of CLG. And I kind of want to dissect how those came about in these individualized matchups. Uh, the one in mid lane, I think, actually had a really large impact. You know, CLG, when they got Poe Belter, they're like, this is the damage that's going to show up to the fight. So if you give him this large CS advantage, it pays off. Gate, he's in the regular season, he ended up being 12 out of 14 at CSD at 10, being down almost more than anybody else. I think Shifter was the, actually he's 14th, he was dead last, that's right. Gate was dead last, Shifter was number 12. Mm. So what they did is they exploited that. They sent Smithy mid one time, got the flash off of the Poe Belter shockwave, and Poe Belter just kept winning, not even trades. He just kept harassing him. He kept throwing the Q and the W, clearing the wave, and simultaneously mm. poking him down. So it was honestly big misplays there by Gate because he seemed like he was trying his best to exert pressure, but it's almost impossible to do on a Lulu that's playing defensively. So it was very, very strange, but the, the lead that actually manifested was snowballed from there. And the Maokai was pretty much off of lane swap and some good catching of the farm, mm. but that actually ultimately starved Apollo of some CS later on. Right, so when we look at this mid lane matchup, Kiwi, Lulu, he's now been on that champion twice mm -hmm. here, going down in CS. We saw it in a few team fights where he was just kind of dancing around on the back line. He didn't feel useful. Yeah, Lulu is known as a rarely a very safe pick and doesn't have that many counters, but Ori is actually something that can not only harass it, but you know do well against as you can shield the poke and you can most likely out farm it. As I'd say, you can do camps a lot faster. So it was a great pick by them. But also, Lulu really does nothing except just shield, as I said earlier. And the only thing they have is a single threat comp in vain. Yeah. And honestly, when you watch the games, TIP aren't really making that many mistakes. It's just that. They're just getting out farmed, and mm -hmm. they they should feel pressure to make plays, and they're not getting enough. Like, Rush had some great kills early, and maybe they weren't that great. Maybe it could have been attributed to CLG's kind of greediness. So, CLG yeah. on your monitor now, discussing their strategies for Game Three. I mean, starting out two zero, they've got to have a, have a lot of confidence. But this does point to you know Tip needing to make a make a change here because what's working for CLG is working. And when you, I want to go back to this kind of single threat idea here because a lot of weight is being put on Apollo's shoulders. It didn't work out in Game One. It didn't work out in Game Two. Although he did play pretty fantastically yeah. here in Game Two. Let's let's not forget. Yeah, his positioning in team fights. He's playing out of his mind. But both AD carriers are playing really highly. But this entire series, I did expect to see the victor here instead of the Lulu. Mm -hmm. When we were going through Champions like when they banned the Azir, we thought CLG was going to take it. But then I really expected Tip to pick it up instead of the Lulu. Because I feel like that's what they need. They need that wave clear. Yeah. They need that instantaneous wave clear. And then paired with the Braum, when I saw Braum first pick, Braum Victor is amazing at wave clearing and staving off sieges. Because mm -hmm. he just stands in front, you're not going to do any damage, and then you just instantly clear. Yeah, I'm going to expect to see... Well, I think CLG is going to stick to the band, and Azir will definitely be banned. So uh, I think we're going to see an maybe early pick Victor by TIP. CLG didn't really favor it, as we saw, as they didn't first pick it as well. So maybe we'll, we might see it late, but I feel we will not definitely see Lulu. All right, it makes you wonder whether or not this points to a lack of confidence uh, that the team has in gate and his ability to play, or even his own confidence in playing other things. You know, why are they coming back to this Lulu over and over again? And if he isn't comfortable moving off of that and they do need another carry threat, do they look towards impact in the top lane and say, enough of the tanks, let's get him onto something that can really roll? I feel like his best bet is probably get him a NAR so he can have the best of both worlds and mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. have split push threat pressure. I think if you ban, I even like let Olaf up against it is fine or ban Olaf. That's, what, that's a big thing this series that I'm like, okay, they're letting Zion kind of get whatever champion he wants, no problem, and then he'll get counter picks sometimes, and that's actually very alarming because when you have the Nar into the Maokai, you're going to have a really good time. And then they keep doing that over and over again, and they don't really save impact, and they're putting them on these tanks. I don't want to see that happen again. I want to mm. see more threats. Mm -hmm. I want to see TIP have more avenues to win the game. Yeah, well, and normally when you think about Tip, Kiwi, we think of Rush as being one of the huge threats. Yeah. He did manage to secure mm -hmm. the lease in for himself this time around, but mm -hmm. the Nidalee being banned out in this series, I do feel is hindering them in their ability to present an extra threat. Yeah, I feel the most impact will go is like Nara, as you said, but he might pull out a Rumble. But I think if I was in their shoes, I would go back to the Shen. They played Shen three games against us. I know they play a lot of Shen during scrims. They're really comfortable 
honestly, they had a really sizable lead the first game. I think if I were them, I would pick Shen again and have a threat mid and see how it goes. All right, some things to look forward to. CLG are just one victory screen away from playing in the finals at Madison Square Garden. After this break, we'll jump into game three to see if they can get it done. Don't go anywhere. Putting all their eggs in the Apollo basket. His vein is going to be well protected. Can he carry him out? Here we go with game two. Like, you make a good enough play. There's a flash kick and a kill. He's got it. Oh, my Perfect God. Perfect play by Rush. He knew he could take it. Looks for a lot. Rush can only do so oh much. But oh, my God. A double kill, and Apollo's still going. A flash. Fight, fight, fight. I'm coming, coming. Watch out for Ariana. Watch out for Ariana. Oh. Wait, 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 Ariana. I'm slow. I'm tanky. Kill front line. I'm Oriana. That's good. All right, watch, I'm watch, 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 I'm slowing. Keep it. Lee said. Right. I'm exhausting Bane when he comes out. Exhaust, I'm exhausting. I exhausted him. I exhausted him. Play, play, play. Bane, 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 Bane. Zion Spartan hops away. Double gets the first kill. There's the re-engage by Adrian. Gets pulled right back in. He goes down. A double kill. Counter Logic Gaming are one win away from their first ever North American LCS final.